welcome to Next Game Sortie Series, Episode 12, Ideal Solo Gallum Free Farming Path. Now my previous video went over how to maximize your Starstone chances, but once you have enough Starstones, you can switch back to farming Gallum Free as your primary goal and actually achieve twice the number that you could have in the Starstone farming runs while still giving you three chances at Starstones. Now the path that you follow for this type of run is the most critical part of it as otherwise you can spend a large amount of time running around needlessly. So during this video, I'll take you through each step of the run that should allow you to get near 10,000 Gollum free and chances at 11 sapphires, 3 star stones, and 14 echondrites and cases. Now I'll be doing this example on Ninja and you should be able to do a large amount of the run on other jobs as well as long as you have a job capable of multi-step skill chains and magic burst. Now I'll specifically mention what you need to do to complete each objective during this run as I go through it. Now if I mention an objective that your job or current setup can't accomplish, just skip over that objective and continue on to the next one. It's the sum total of all of these that add up to roughly 10,000 gallum free, so skipping a few objectives that you find too difficult for you to accomplish at your present state or job will only short you a few hundred gallum free by the end of the run and the rest of the run should still prove quite useful. Also keep in mind that if you are on a DD job, you can use Shantoto 2 to complete most if not all of the magic objectives that are required in this run. Let's go ahead and start off with our trust selection. Now it's going to change as the run goes on, but at the start of the run I recommend either the party of Sylvie, Star Sybil, RKV, Monboro, and Yignis, or Yoran Oram, Joaquim, Korumoru, RKV, and then using either Monboro or Kupipi in that final slot. Now either of these groups will be enough healing for Phase 1. Now in Phase 1, we want to immediately take the Diaphanous Device to Device D. Once there, quickly drop your Obsidian Wing for your first chest, D2, and 100 Gallum Free. We next immediately put up Sneak and Invisible and head north to check out this room that has a party of Farmer in it and the room north of it that has two parties of Farmer in it. You are checking these two areas for both the Abject Obdella and the Demizang Deleterious. If you find the Obdella in either of these two areas, immediately safely pull it to a nearby location and kill it as quickly as you can. The kill of this minor NM should only take 60 to 90 seconds and will reward you with Coffer A, which contains 500 Gallum Free and a Sapphire, Case, or Ekondrite. Now, if you find the Demizang Deleterious in either of these two areas, you need to try to safely and quickly pull him. This is one of the most crucial parts of this run and where most struggle. If you safely pull him without linking more than two to three other Demizang mobs, you want to immediately engage him and leave the two to three adds on you while RKV tanks the deleterious. You want to use multi-step skill chains with magic burst or hybrid weapon skills with magic burst to dispatch with this minor NM as quickly as possible. Be sure to get your shadows back up after each skill chain combination to buy yourself time to get another one off. Now once the deleterious is dead, you want to switch to any adds that you may have linked and kill them off with four step skill chains. Doing a four step skill chain on each farmer is critical as killing three Demizang mobs with four step skill chains causes chest D3 to spawn and killing three more in this fashion causes chest D4 to spawn, each netting us 100 more gallon free. Now that third farmer kill after defeating the Demizang will also give us Coffer D, which is good for 500 more gallon free and another chance at a Sapphire, Case, or Ekondrite. That is not all though, as there's also more to be done here if you can manage it, and it's what I'm showing you here in this example. Ideally, you want to pull and kite the Demizang without any links. Doing so allows you to kill him as quickly as possible and for you to attempt to get Casket D1 and D2. Both of these give us 100 more gallum free and a chance at a Sapphire, Ekondrite, or Case. We accomplish this by killing the mobs in this room here in the order of Warrior, Monk, White Mage, Black Mage, Red Mage, and then lastly, the Thief, to unlock both of these caskets. This is because D1 is unlocked by killing six Farmer of differing job types, and D2 is unlocked by killing the Farmer in the exact job order I just mentioned. Now something to keep in mind with the pull of the Demizang Deleterious. 
always keep in mind where the closest device is to your current location. If it looks like it's going to be a pole that links more than you can handle, pull the Demizang and immediately run towards that device. This will cause him and anything that links with it to follow you to the device. Get to it and use it as soon as possible. Once used, use it to go back to where you came from and all of the farmer will have de -aggroed. And more often than not, the Demizang is the closest to you and you can pull him without linking or by only linking a smaller number of mobs than that you originally linked. Make sure you use this tactic to save time. If you link big in this northernmost room, be ready to head to the device A right here and make sure you open the door before you pull if you expect it to be a nasty one. Now if you link big in this north party room, run for this nearby device D as your escape. Now what happens if the Demizang and Abdella NMs weren't in the northernmost section? Well that's going to frequently happen and it's no problem. After that northern section is checked, you then continue south past device D to open gate D2 to see if the minor NMs are present in this next area here. Note, if you link here, you can easily pull back to device D that you just passed to de-aggro them all. Now, if both have still not been located, head further south to this room with a party in it to see if any are present here. This room presents another opportunity to get casket D1 and D2 if you find the deleterious NM was in this lower part of the map and not in the northern part, so make sure you keep it in mind. Now if you've still not found both the Abdella and Demizang NMs, head southwest to the square of Farmer. From the east side of this square, you can use wide scan to scan both the full square itself and the large room to your east to see if either of the two NMs you've not killed are present. If you find that the deleterious NM is in that southeast room, you need to use extreme caution pulling as there really is no nearby device to get to that's going to get you out of a large link. So make sure you use extreme caution when pulling from that room. Fortunately, I find that the deleterious NM is in that room less than 10% of the time, so you won't run into it that often. Now a few things to keep in mind if you need to go into this southern section in search of one or both of the NMs. The first is you can get chest D1 worth 100 gallon free if you open gate D1 and D2 within a few minutes of each other. And if you're scanning this southern section 4 NMs, you can easily get between those two gates within that time. Therefore, if you happen to find one of the NMs and it happens to be close to opening gate D1, make sure you keep going and open gate D1 for the chest and then return for the NM kill. The next thing to keep in mind is this square area here is by far the easiest area on the entire map to kill farmer without linking large amounts of them. If you're a player who is struggling with farmer links, I recommend not worrying about the casket D1 and D2 mentioned previously where you kill the farmer in a specific job order and instead just come here after you've killed the Demizang deleterious NM to get your six farmer kills. This will only lower your gallon free of your run by a few hundred and make it much more manageable for players just starting out on this farming path. Now the third and final thing to keep in mind is if by chance you have not seen the deleterious NM before gate D1, then that means you're going to see him in this area just beyond it. Once you kill him, you can either head back to the square for your easy farmer kills, or go to the section down below to get exactly one party kill in order for caskets D1 and D2 as previously mentioned. Now if you've not seen Abdella in any of the farmer sections of the map, it means you will find them in our next phase when we take on Sector A. One last thing to keep in mind is if you do happen to link a large amount of farmer in this southwest room, your closest device is going to be the original device which is north of you. Now since most of the farmer in this room are mages, I can usually handle a good number of them before I'm overwhelmed, so I usually don't choose to run for that device regardless of how many I end up linking but just keep it in mind in case you feel overwhelmed. That's going to be it for phase one and the most critical and difficult phase in your run. You should be able to do all of this in about 15 minutes. Note that on runs when you find both of those NMs right away and get no links, you can get it done in as easy as 12 minutes, but on runs where you get a link or two or have to run all the way to that final room to find all the NMs, it may take as long as 18 minutes, so as long as you're in that window of 12 to 18 minutes, you're right on track. Now if you were able to complete all of the objectives spoken of in these first 15 minute session, you should now have earned roughly 2600 gallon free if you include the galley that were received from both the farmer kills 
and the NM kills. Next, let's turn our attention to Phase 2 and Sector A. The first thing we need to address is how to get there. Now if you happen to finish your Sector D objectives from this room here and killed the Abdella NM, you want to now head directly north and sneak through the AQX mobs to Gate A1. This is the shortest path and start to your run, and the one that will normally take closer to 12 minutes if you're lucky enough. Now if you finish your Sector G objectives and the Abdella NM kill in either of these two rooms, you want to head to Device D and take it to the original device, and then head north to Gate A1. If you've taken this path, you're normally about 15 minutes into your run by the time you get to Gate A1. However, if you've finished Sector D objectives and your Abdella kill beyond this room here, I find it's best to just continue the run through both D gates until you get back to the exit D gate here. Once through this gate, keep running north with sneak up until you get to gate A1, all the while watching out for the Abdella on wide scan if you've not killed him yet. This is the longest path and the one that will normally take closer to 18 minutes if your run ends up going this way. So all of those paths have now brought us to gate A1. Before opened, you want to drop RKV and summon another Healing Trust or Shantoto 2 if you're on a DD job. Once the gate is opened, you will trigger A1 for another 100 Gallum Free, and you need to rest just beyond the gate to trigger chest A2 for another 100 Gallum Free, and yet another chance at a Sapphire and other usual items. We now need to head north to kill six leeches, making sure to have the killing blow be a single target magic spell on each of them. I find this is most easily accomplished on Ninja by using a hybrid weapon skill skill chain combination of two to chi, followed by a dual magic burst. Doing so makes it so the first or second magic burst always kill the leech and makes for some quick kills. Now after you have killed three leeches with magic, you will get chest A3 to spawn which has 100 Gallum Free and our Shard in it. After three more Leech kills with magic, Chest A4 will spawn, containing 100 more Gallum Free and our Metal. Doing this will also trigger Casket A1 to spawn, since we have killed five abject foes. This casket contains 500 Galley and another chance at a Sapphire and the usual items. This will be the first part that the DG jobs will have difficulty accomplishing, what you need to do is find what series of weapon skills and skill chains leave the leeches at around 10% hit points. Then you want to use white damage to get him down to 1-2% to hit points and then turn your back so that Shantoto 2 can finish the leech off with magic damage. This does slow your run down by a few minutes, but allows you to complete these objectives here in Phase 2, which are worth a ton of Gallum Free. We are now ready to take on Gajot. Run to Gadget A here and engage Gajot as quickly as you can. I like to pull him to the side, right against the wall, to avoid his attacks hitting as many of my trust as possible. Try to enfeeble him with slow and paralyze, and you want to spam magic damage. So I choose to use hybrid weapon skills that skill chain, so I use two to chi again and then close with a dual rate and magic burst. Be sure to use Fute and Berserk as much as you can to maximize your damage. If you're using Sylvie as your trust, this fight can be a bit difficult at times since she will be taking damage as well since she insists on standing right next to you. This along with the desire not to do the wrong type of damage to Kajo is why we brought an extra healer along. You want to make sure to do only light based damage to Kajo or your run will quickly end. Keep this in mind when it comes to the trust selection and make sure it's only you that is dealing damage to this enemy. This means you should have unsummoned Shantoto 2 if you used him for your magic damage kills earlier just to make sure he doesn't accidentally trigger the wrong element. Now once killed, you will be rewarded with another 2000 Gallum Free and another chance at a Sapphire and the usual items. Now at this point in the run, you should have between 30 and 35 minutes remaining depending on just how well your run has gone and how much you have had to run around and you should have earned right around 5,300 Gallum Free if you've accomplished all the objectives I've spoken of. You now want to sneak up and take the long trek back south to the starting device. You will also want to unsummon the extra healer and now summon Valnareel. Now, from this starting device, you normally will head for device A. 
at device A, we want to first put up shadows near the device to trigger chest A2, which will reward us with another 100 gallum free, and then run to the nearby Bitzer A and touch it while naked to trigger chest A5 for another 100 gallum free. I suggest you have a macro set up that automatically unequips all of your gear, and then a separate one that re-equips it to make this objective easier to accomplish. Now, if you've not killed Abdella yet, you will also want to check with Widescan this area here because this is where the enemy will be present if you've not seen him in any of the other areas we have checked thus far. Please note, this Device A part can be put into an earlier part of the run if you wish. You could do it right at the start of the run before you head to Sector D, or right after Sector D finishes if you happen to use the Device D to get to the original device. This part of the run usually only takes about 45 to 60 seconds, so that's why you can really fit it in at any part of the initial two phases of this run. We next use the original device, or device A, whichever one we're at, to get to device B. From here, we will do a hooray near the device to trigger chest B2, good for yet another 100 gallon free, and then start searching for the Porxy Minor NM. First, check wide scan immediately to see if you're lucky enough for him to be here. If not, open gate B4 and check this area here before moving on to the umbral area, being sure to keep up sneaking and invis through that area on your way to this northern area. Now if the Porxy has not been seen in any of those locations I've mentioned on wide scan, then he is going to be in this room here behind gate B1, which prohibits the use of wide scan, so you just need to head to the area and look for him. I'll normally find him around here when he is in this room. Now this part should only take about five minutes, even if you need to run around and find the Porxy. So you will normally finish it with 25 to 30 minutes remaining. This brings us to phase three. Now after the Porxy is dead, you want to head to Bitzer B and take it. On the other side, you will navigate the map looking for your exit. All you need to do is click on it while wearing five pieces of Empyrean armor lock styled, and it's gonna trigger casket F1. Good for 3000 gallon free, and our first chance at a star stone and the usual items. You want to go to this area first and make sure it's not present here. Then you want to go through the gate and check this square before moving to check this pixie area and then the final square to find where the exit bitzer is. If you're lucky, it's going to be in one of the closer areas, making this part of the run only take two to three minutes. If you have to run all the way to the end, it can take as much as five leaving you with 20 to 25 minutes remaining. At this point, we should have earned roughly 6,100 gallon free. We now want to head through this gate into C zone, which will trigger casket B2, which contains 100 gallon free and the usual items. It also starts the timer on the boot NM, so we need to start looking for him immediately. You first want to use wide scan as soon as you open the door to make sure he didn't come through the gate behind you or isn't in front of you where the course are. If you don't see him, put up Sneak and Invisible and head through the course to open gate C2. You now want to scan this area and this area for the boot. If you see him, you want to first open this C2 gate to trigger chest C1 to spawn good for another 100 gallon free. Then you want to pull the boot NM to a safe location and kill him. Now if you don't see him on wide scan in any of these initial areas, you want to keep going past gate C2 and C1 to the northern boot section where he will be. Now even if he's in this northern location, you also have about 2 minutes to kill him before time expires to trigger coffer C. As long as you kill him in those initial 5 minutes once you opened C gate, you will trigger coffer C, which gives you another chance at a sapphire and the usual items. He's also the final minor NM. So once he's killed, an arm coffer will spawn with 1,000 gallon free in it and a chance at a sapphire and the usual items. Now this part also should only take you about 5 minutes, so at this point in the run you should normally have 15 to 20 minutes remaining and we should have earned around 8,000 gallon free. This brings us to phase 4, and how you proceed from here will depend on exactly how much time you have left and really how your run's gone to this point. If you're just starting out doing this type of gallum free farming run, or you've just had one of those rough runs where things didn't go right, you may only have 5 to 10 minutes left at this time. If that's the case, then I recommend you skip right to phase 5. However, if you have the expected 15 to 20 minutes left, 
then phase 4 is all about farming until we have those 5 to 10 minutes remaining. To do that most efficiently, we want to kill 6 boot in the area closest to us. Now hybrid weapon skills with magic burst were most effectively on these boot, but multi-step skill chains with magic burst are also extremely potent. You also need to make sure that you magic burst each one of these mobs before it dies, as doing so on 3 will cause chest C3 to spawn, containing 100 more gallon free. Killing another 3 with magic burst before they die will cause chest C4 to spawn, containing 100 more gallum free. This is another spot that if you're on a DD job, you can use Shantoto 2 to magic burst your skill chains to fulfill the objective. Now, if you can manage to kill three of these within 15 seconds of gaining enmity, you will trigger casket C1, which will give you another 100 gallum free and a chance at the sapphire and usual items. Now, I've only been able to trigger this casket C1 on a few occasions as my hybrid weapon skills really have to spike in damage on three different enemies to pull it off but it's a fun thing to shoot for at the end of these farming runs. Now if you kill fast enough, you can kill up to 12 boot before you reach that 7 to 12 minute remaining mark. That's when you will head for device C and phase 5 will begin. Whether you head for device C at either 7 or 12 minutes depends on if you have zone H unlocked. If you do, head there at 12 minutes remaining. If you don't have zone H unlocked yet, you can keep killing until you have 7 minutes remaining and then Head off towards device C. Now here we are at the end of phase 4, and if we have accomplished all of the objectives I've spoken of thus far, we've earned close to 9100 gallum free. Now on your way to device C, be sure to grab a course and pull him to device C, and kill him there to trigger chest C2 for an additional 100 gallum free. Then respawn all the mobs in the zone using the device, and then head for Bitzer C to spawn chest C5 for another 100 gallum free. Now, take Bitzer C into Zone G. You want to be sure that you do not have yellow or red hit points when you start running through this zone. Put Sneak and Invisible up and head through Zone G to find the exit Bitzer of the zone. Thankfully, it's a straight path this time, so it takes about a minute less to survey the zone. You want to immediately head through the gate and follow the path around, checking all three areas that it can spawn until you find the Bitzer. Once you do, Stay within 6 feet of it and keep your cursor on it and staring at it to spawn casket G1, which gives you another 300 gallum free and our second chance at a star stone and the usual items. Now if you happen to get aggro while opening the chest or using the bitzer, quickly engage the enemy to have Valnareal take hate on him and any other adds, then quickly disengage and use the bitzer to get back to zone C. Now if you don't have access to Zone H, you should now use your remaining few minutes to farm course for some extra gallon free. If you do have access to Zone H, immediately head for Bitzer D and take it to Zone H. Once there, use Sneak and Invisible and again, quickly find that Exit Blitzer. This is the largest basement floor, therefore it's going to take you 4-5 to five minutes to get through the entire thing if you can't find that Exit Bitzer. Make sure you check this area off to the side first and then the other three areas that are all in a row, second. Then, when it puts you back into Zone D, use Bitzer D again to go back into Zone H. This time, Casket H1 will spawn at your feet as soon as you enter the zone, giving you 300 more gallum free and your third and final chance at a Star Stone and the usual items. You are now stuck in Zone H though, so all you can do is move forward and start to kill Farmer. They take about 2-3 to three minutes to solo, so if you have enough time, go for it and try and finish one final enemy off. If you can manage to kill one and accomplish everything else spoken of in this video, you will have just obtained 10,007 gallon free in a single run. Congratulations. Keep in mind, I've only been able to accomplish this full 10,000 gallon free run on two occasions. Normally, I end up in the 9500 to 9900 gallon free range depending on just how the run goes and how many of the tougher objectives I can get in. So that is what you should expect to be achieving once you get familiar with the run I've just put forth. Also, a note on Zone H. You will note I finally have access. To get access to Zone H, you need to kill all Farmer enemies in Zone D in a single run. This is sadly more than one can accomplish solo, but getting access was actually easier than I expected. Thankfully, my friend Servoraz reached out to me and offered to take his army of characters in with me to see if we could accomplish this. 
The party format was Cerveroz on Paladin, Dark Knight, Bard, Corsair, and Geo, and me on Ninja. I did about two-thirds of our damage on Ninja just using hybrid weapon skills, and we finished with about 15 minutes remaining. It was much easier than expected when properly buffed. A huge thanks to Cerveroz for helping me unlock Zone H. If you don't have access yet, even if you're a solo player, consider teaming up with some other soloers to get that unlock in. It's far easier than you would think when you are properly buffed. That's going to be about all I have to share on this latest episode in the Sortie series. I hope you found this farming path that I presented helpful. If this is your first visit to my channel and you enjoyed the content, please be sure to click the subscribe button under the video and the bell icon next to it to be notified of my future videos released. Thanks so much for watching everyone. We'll see you next time. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.